I've hit record. Good morning. In the name of God, I bid you welcome to this worship service from Port Wallace United Church, centered in Dartmouth, but gathered with people from all around the world. If you have a candle present with you, I encourage you to light the candle to remind us that the light of Christ is with us. Wherever two or three are gathered together in God's name, God will be there with us to whisper to us, to talk to us, and to be with us. So light the candle, and always light the candle to remind us of this, a physical reminder of God's spiritual presence. Will you join me in the opening responses? Arise and shine, for our light has come. The glory of the Lord has risen upon us. O Lord, open our lips, that we may proclaim your praise. O Lord, open our eyes, that we may behold your presence. O Lord, open your ears, that we may perceive your voice. O Lord, open our hearts, that we may respond to your love. O Lord, open our lives, that we may rejoice with all creation. We have a hymn. Adam's going to lead us in the hymn. today is taken from the book of Genesis, reading chapter 23 at verse 22, or 32, excuse me. That night, Jacob got up and took his two wives, his two female servants, and his 11 sons, and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. After he had sent them across the stream, he sent over all his possessions. So Jacob was left alone, and a being wrestled with him until daybreak. When the being saw that he could not overpower Jacob, the being touched the socket of Jacob's hip so that his hip was wrenched as he wrestled with this being. Then the being said to him, let me go for it is daybreak. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. The being asked him, 
what is your name? Jacob, he replied. Then the being said, your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel, because you have wrestled with God and with humans and have overcome. Jacob said to the being, please tell me your name. But he replied, why do you ask my name? Then the being blessed him there. So Jacob called the name of the place Peni El, meaning the face of God, saying, it is because I saw God face to face, and yet my life was spared. So the sun rose above Jacob as he passed by Peniel. And he was limping because the angel had touched him on the hip. Therefore, to this day, the Israelites do not eat the tendon attached to the socket of the hip because the socket of Jacob's hip was touched near the tendon. There ends the lesson appointed for this day. Well, thanks be to God. Amen. So, I was out this morning with my friendly little furry feature, Seamus, and we picked a daisy. Now, I don't know how many of you remember the story of the daisy, but the daisy was supposed to be a, a flower that told you if somebody loved you. So a common thing to do was to sit and pluck the petals off the daisy and say these words. He loves me. He loves me not. He loves me. He loves me not. And by doing that, you could find out whether somebody, you're supposed to be able to find out whether somebody would love you or not. It's a, a childish way of looking at things, but sometimes little children like to have ways of figuring things out. And sometimes we are the children of God. And sometimes we do the same thing. Does God love me? Does God not love me? Does God love me? Does God not love me? And so we go through life, plucking away, wondering if God loves us. And that's what Jacob is doing in many ways this morning. He's wondering if God loves him. And sometimes our little people, our friends, wonder if God loves them. I want to assure you that as you pluck away things in life, the one thing you will find out that when you pluck the very last ones, you say, God loves me. And you have the answer to your question. So next time you look at a daisy, think of that, that God loves you. No matter who you are or where you are, when you end up in life, God loves you. So look at the daisy and be reminded with that. No matter what you're going through in life, no matter what the struggles you have in life, God will love you. God will always love you. There's no doubt and no different outcome. So isn't that right, James? Yep, okay, <laughs> very good. Let's say the children's prayer together. In peace, dear God, I come to you through Jesus Christ who makes me new. And while I run or play or rest, be with those whom I love best. Guide me in your holy way as you walk with me each day. Amen. Okay, our teaching prayer. After that, Adam is going to lead us, I believe, in a hymn. Listen, listen, God is calling. Listen, God is calling Through the word inviting Offering forgiveness Comfort and joy Listen, God is calling Through the word inviting Offering forgiveness Comfort and joy Listen, God is calling Through the word inviting Offering forgiveness Comfort and joy
Thank you, Adam. From the different mu music of the world comes together the children of God. Let us pray. Almighty God, may the words in my mouth and the meditations in all our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, my strength and our Redeemer. Amen. So I'd like to start off with a question. Which one of us have not lived in fear of what tomorrow will bring? Which one of us have not spent hours in anguish wondering what's going to happen tomorrow? In the case of COVID-19, we're wondering what is going to happen tomorrow? In the case of the church opening, the building opening, what's going to happen tomorrow? In, this, in the form of the future, what is going to happen tomorrow? Mark Twain, Samuel Clements, once wrote, I wasted a lot of my life worrying about things that never came to pass. Think about that. I wasted a lot of my life worrying about things that never came to pass. Each one of us has spent time worrying about tomorrow. And this is where we find Jacob in the story, the ongoing story from the book of Genesis. Jacob is facing tomorrow and is torturesome because he has to face what he has done in the past. This has been described as a watershed moment. So hold that in your mind. He is coming home, Jacob is, and he has to face his brother. The last words that Jacob heard out of Esau, his brother, saying to him was, I will kill you. Jacob has cheated Esau out of his birthright, his inheritance. Then he deceived their father and received the patriarchal blessing, meaning that he would be the one who would be the head of the family and the one who would carry on the family's relationship with God and not Esau. Remember that the roots of the name Jacob mean to deceive. And Jacob has done every deceitful, mean, unrighteous thing he could have ever done to his brother. And then he fled. He left his brother. He left his family. He fled to the lands of his uncle, Laban, where he fell in love with Rachel. The biblical text says that Jacob worked for seven years to win Rachel's hand, only to be deceived on the night of their marriage and forced into marrying her older sister, Leah. The great deceiver had been deceived. And then he agreed to work another seven years to work to win Rachel's hand in marriage. It was almost as if life were teaching him a lesson. Now remember, never trust the biblical text when it comes to numbers. Never trust a biblical number to be a literal number. Seven means a complete cycle of existence. The existence of this, the essence of this, is that the great deceiver himself now has been deceived and he's feeling the anguish of what he has done. He's starting to contemplate what he has done in life. And he has to go through the cycle in order to experience what he has done to others. He has to go through the cycle of life to work all things out. In the end, he agrees to work another cycle to set things straight. And he received the most wonderful gift by working it all out. He received someone who loved him. At the end of the two cycles of seven years, at the end of this struggle, God says to Jacob, it's time for you to go home. Now going home can be a fearful thing, especially if we have to go home to face our fears, especially if we have to go home to face things we've done, especially, especially if we have to go home to face family. Jacob was petrified of what Esau would say and of what Esau would do. Yet he had to face what he had done. Remember, the very last words that are still echoing in his mind after all these years of being away were, I will kill you. In the time he has been away, in the company of others, away from his family and friends, away from the life he knew, living this new life, Jacob has been very successful. He has huge flocks of sheep and goats, cattle and camels. He has two wives, Leah and Rachel. He has 11 children. He has hundreds of servants. He has been very successful and built for himself a wonderful life away from home. Yet all this success means absolutely nothing to him at this present moment. He has to face what he has done, and that's occupying his complete being. The most fair, terrifying thing is that he has to face Esau, his twin, his brother, 
the one who knows him from the very beginning, the one whom he deceived, the one whom he cheated, and the one whom he abandoned to look after his father's flocks and to look after their parents. He fled. Even at this point, Jacob is still the conniving great deceiver. Jacob divides his flocks and sends them on ahead of him in successive waves into the land of Canaan, where Esau is dwelling. Jacob thinks in his mind that if Esau slaughters the first wave in anger or revenge, then the others will have time to turn around and come back, and Jacob will not lose all that he has gained. So he sends them off, a sacrifice, to appease his brother. But he stays behind at the ford, ford of the Jabbok, the place where you cross the river Jabbok. And there he plans to spend the night and see what happens from a distance to those whom he has sent on ahead. Now, you would almost say that Jacob was a coward. But if you say that, then you must be saying that of ourselves. For each one of us has done something like this in our time. Testing the waters, we call it. That first night long ago when Jacob fled his family, he was all alone. And he spent the night in the stony ground at Bethel. And there he saw a ladder reaching up into heaven and angels going up and coming down from heaven. And he saw God sitting at the head of the ladder in heaven on his throne. And God made him a promise that he would care for him, that he would take care of him. So tonight, once again, Jacob is all alone. That first night, he had to face what was behind him and face an unknown future. This night, he has to face what is behind him and has to face an unknown future as well. And as he lays himself down to sleep, a mysterious being appears, an angel. Only this time the angel is not ascending and descending the ladder with messages from God. Tonight the angel is there and having a wrestling match with Jacob. Now there's a wonderful play on words that we don't pick up here in Hebrew. Jacob in Hebrew is Yaakov. To wrestle in Hebrew is pronounced Ya'bach. The river Jabach is pronounced Ya'bach. So J Jacob is having to wrestle with what he has done the choices that he has made, the fear of what lies ahead of him. So Jacob and wrestling and the Jabbok are all somehow combined into one, one night of anguish. Jacob has to face what he has done. Now the Jabbok River cuts a deep gorge through the plateau on the west side of the Jordan River in modern day, the kingdom of Jordan. And it eventually flows down over this plateau over through ravines into the Jordan River. And as it flows, it cuts a deep ravine, a deep gorge, a deep canyon through the plateau. And Jacob is at the mouth of the river Jabbok. And there the huge gorge, like think of the Grand Canyon, is, is there around him. He has descended into this place of darkness to get ready to cross. A ravine, a gorge, a canyon it can be a very frightful place. The wind whistles and faraway voices are carried until you feel as if they are surrounding you, that you're surrounded by people. Logically, you know they're not there, but you hear their voice. And the echo of what you have said and the echo of what you've done seems to be coming at you from every direction. And this is where Jacob finds himself in the night, alone, at the ford of the Jabbok, in this gorge, petrified having to face tomorrow. The voice of his brother is echoing in his head, I will kill you. The echo of what he has done is surrounding him. A thousand little things are popping out of the past to whisper to him in faraway places. And there at the ford of the Jabbok, this mysterious being appears. Now angels, usually have a good reputation. Granted, they always scare, seem to scare the daylights out of you, and the first thing an angel seems to say is, be not afraid. But they usually come bearing tidings of great joy, to quote the Christmas message. Essentially, they are messengers from God, beings who come to do God's bidding, being sent from God 
to meet with humans, being sent from God to speak with humans. This being is sent from God to wrestle with Jacob, to confront Jacob. Like the ghosts of Christmas past who confront Scrooge and Dickens' A Christmas Carol. Sometimes God causes us to face our greatest fears, to wrestle with who we are, to struggle with what we have done, not because God wishes to punish us, torture us, or torment us. That's what the world does to us. But sometimes God faces us, causes us to face our fears because God knows that only by facing our fears can we be set free from our fears, can we be set free at liberty to be the person God knows we can be. So Jacob wrestles with this mysterious being all night. Now, which one of us has not gone to bed only to not go to sleep? All night long we toss and turn, unable to defeat the entity, entity that we cannot escape, unable to stop wrestling with the entity that is all surrounding us, unable to get the voice of the entity out of our mind, unable to derail the trail, the train of worry. And this is where Jacob is. Finally, the long night is coming to the end and the dawn is starting to appear. It's not that Jacob has an answer because he's wrestled all this time, but because of wrestling all this time, there's a plethora of possible decisions he could take. It's not that we get an answer when we struggle, but the fact that we struggle, that we face our demons, that is what is important. Because we wrestled with them and did not ignore them, because we wrestled with them and did not get drunk or high to deal with them, because we wrestled with them, and because we exposed the deep shame or fear which has been haunting us and with which we have been living all these years, it's because of this struggle that the angel gives Jacob a new name and gives us new courage. Jacob, after struggling all night in the darkness alone, is given the name Israel, Israel, which means the one who struggles or wrestles with God. And by wrestling and struggling sometimes with God, with our past, we become the children of God, those who wrestle with God, the children whom God believes can be better if we face what lies before us. The angel does not defeat Jacob, nor does Jacob defeat the angel. It's not God's purpose to defeat us, to humiliate us, or to destroy us or to say we're completely wrong and evil and a miserable sinner. That's not the way of God. What God's will is, is to cause us to face what we have done. And that's hard. Sometimes it's a hard struggle, but always it's what we have to do to be free. We have to face what has happened, to be free from our past to be free from the fetters of yesterday, to be free to start again in God's care, in God's hands, into God's future. We have to face sometimes what we have done. We have to face tomorrow. As the statement of faith says, God is with us. We are not alone. And oftentimes we feel we are alone, but remember, even as Jacob was alone, the loneliest at all times in his life, God was there, just as God is with us, to strengthen us, to encourage us, to offer us possibilities as our pilgrimage begins on our way home. Sometimes each one of us has to face the reality of our world, and only by facing it can we be set free from it. And usually by facing it, we find out that he loves me. God loves me. Although I don't want to say it, and although I don't want to believe it, but sometimes I feel that God forces us to wrestle with those demons so that we can finally be set free from the deeds that have imprisoned us for so long that we may know that God is with us, that God will hold us, and that yes, he loves me. I don't know what's ahead of us in life. But I know one thing, 
He loves me. The next morning, Jacob gets up and crosses the Jabbok and goes to meet his brother. And the story continues. But that's for another day, because this, this is where this sermon ends. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, may we hear your word today. May we hear you say to us, you love us. And may we find courage to cross to the ravines of life into the promised land. Thanks be to God. Amen. So will you stand and make with me a statement of faith? We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect to creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus, crucified and risen, our judge and our hope. In life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. And now we have the announcements for the church community. So first of all, thank you for joining us virtually this morning. And for those of you who are visiting different parts of the country, thank you for joining with us as we gather together in Port Wallace and seek to become the community, the body of Christ in this place and time. The announcements for this week are there before you. You see August the 9th, what's this, what lies before us there. Worship for our church family today, Wednesday morning devotions, from 12 to 1.30, Paul will be at the church once again to receive our food offerings to supply the food bank. And Paul has said to us that the special of the week this week is at Walmart. It's clover leaf tuna for 97 cents a can. So that allows us to provide some protein for people's meals. So clover leaf tuna at 97 cents a can from Walmart is where we will be this week to find the specials of the week. Thursday evening, uh, Adam's going to have the choir get together. For those of you who missed it, last week Adam had the trivia. Adam, do you want to talk about choir and trivia for just a moment? Yeah. I'll... Forgot my mic's over here. Uh, I'll I'll just amend that that uh, uh, this week we won't be having the choir on Thursday night. It is the uh, rehearsal for my sister's uh, wedding, which will be this Saturday, uh, which we're very excited for. Uh, and uh, and last week, thank you for everyone who came out to the trivia night. Uh, it was, uh, I wasn't sure how it might go trying to use Zoom in this way, but it, uh, it was very successful and I had a lot of fun and I hope you did too. And congratulations to Liz Joyce and family uh, uh, who, who took home the trophy. Yes, they were very wise. And just bet out the other wise teens by one vote, the one correct answer. Adam, is it Michelle or Jennifer that's going to be married? Which one of your sisters? Oh, I, I can't really keep track. Uh, just kidding. It's uh, Michelle is getting married to uh, to Alexander Sapp. So we'll have to keep Michelle in our prayers and probably keep Alexander in our prayers as well this week. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm reminding everybody to send in your kilometers. Go through the Port Wallace um, page to edit your kilometers. Add your kilometers under the list. We've been to Whitehorse in the Yukon and now we're on our way back east. So before the end of August, we'll be back in the Maritimes. In our prayer cycles, you see there um, who to pray for and so on and so forth. Um, I ask you to be very patient this week and to remember people. Um, this week, we had the funeral service for Sharon Salzman, who is the daughter of May Kennedy. Many of you might remember May from times past. So please keep those people in your prayer. Uh, face masks, once again, they're mandatory now in the province of Nova Scotia. So if you're needing one, please contact the church and we'll get you in contact with the person to be able to get them. Once again, if you're wrestling with light isolation or loneliness and need to speak to someone, call the answer machine and I will be in contact with you as quickly as possible.
As we scroll down, we see the United Churches of Dartmouth there. We see different ways of offering. The stewards have asked us to remember that uh, because some of our regular fundraisers cannot happen because of COVID-19 and the virus, we are not able to have some of the lobster suppers or the turkey suppers or so on and so forth. So they were wondering if you might be able to contribute a little bit more to the general fund. Our mission fund is doing very, very well, and we expect to meet our goal by the end of August. So that's something to be thankful for as we struggle with what the future brings. Once again, to remember to wash your hands, wash them often, to look at the announcement on the church website, and you'll see there bold face, bold faith, brave space, brazen grace, faith gone wild, rendezvous. If you'd like to join that, you can please join that by looking at the email address there, and we'll take you to that. A great event. These are announcements for the church community. If there's further announcements, please let us know, and we'll put them in the announcements list for next Sunday. Also, you can always go to the church webpage to find the update on announcements and a further extension of announcements than what you see here on our Sunday morning worship. At this point, Adam, I believe you have a special anthem for us. Yes, I will just share the screen here. Sorry, Cheryl, I, I think you'll have to enable my screen sharing. I've unshared so you can do it, Adam. Uh, I think there's also a, um, a button near screen share that... Uh, uh, you have to press to enable attendee screen sharing. Right now, it's just host screen sharing. Okay. Don't we love technology? Oh, oh here we go. Try now. Angelus Domini, nun si habit Mariae, et concepit Spiritus Sancto.
Now the question I have, Adam, did you do all the parts? I did. There's uh, uh, seven parts in that. Well done. Thank well you. done. Ave Maria, coming from Luke's Gospel, where the angel says, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed art the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. The next part of the, uh, of the Ave Maria is a prayer added by the Latin Church. Hail, Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners now and in the hour of our death. Amen. The Ave Maria, part biblical, part of prayer, added later on. As we go into prayer, let us think this week of those who are calling upon us around the world. Let us pray for world leaders, that they may wake up and seek the benefit of people. Let us pray for those who are offering spiritual guidance in this time of stress. Let us pray that we will find a way through this renovation of our minds, of our spirits, of our existence. Renovation is such a way that we find freedom. Let us pray for those who are working constantly for our benefit. Let us go to God, let us spread our own lives out before God, and let us let the Spirit enter in to whisper to us words of guidance. Let us pray. Great and mysterious God, you have formed each one of us in your image. You have called us your children, and you have called us to wrestle with the great turmoil in the world, with great decisions in our own lives, with our future, with what we have done. And you have also caused us to wrestle with our dreams, to wrestle with your dreams, to wrestle with your vision of what the world could be and should be. You have called us to be co-creators with you, to take responsibility for what unfolds, to listen to you, to find guidance from you, and then to live with you in caring for creation. We thank you for this day. We thank you for people who have joined us at our table, through this media, through various forms of media, we ask you to bless them and to hold them and us in your care. We ask your blessing upon those who are working this day. We ask your blessing upon those who are waiting this day. And we ask your blessing upon those who are wrestling this day decisions that are occurring around them. Eternal God, you whisper to Jacob that you love him. Whisper to each one of us those same words, that we may know no matter what we face, we are held in your hands, and you will help us find a way through all dilemma. We ask your blessing this day on the youngest, we ask your blessing on the oldest. We ask your blessing upon those who are alone. We ask your blessing upon those who are entering into relationships. We ask your blessing upon those who are fearful in relationships. We ask your blessing upon those whose relationships are coming to an end. And we ask your blessing upon all who hear this prayer. Though we forget many in our prayers, you forget none. So into your kind and your gracious keeping, we commend all people. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray before you, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, dein Reich Huma, Dein Wille geschehe, wie in Himmel so oft Erden. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those 
who trespass against us. Et ne nous soumets pas à la tentation, mais délivre-nous du mal. Wat slaat zijn riecht, ook zijn kummacht, ook zijn gloch, for ever and ever. Amen. I believe as we scroll down, Adam is going to lead us in an Irish tune. cries out with a joyful shout that the God of my heart is great and my spirit sings of the wondrous things that you bring to the ones who wait you fix your sight on your servant's plight and my burn so from east to west shall my name be blessed could the world be about to turn my heart shall sing of the day you bring let the fires of your justice burn Wipe away all tears, for the dawn draws near, and the world is about to turn. Though I am small, my God, my all, you work great things in me. And your mercy will last from the depths of the past to the end of the age to be. Your very name puts the proud to shame, and to those who would do for you. Show your might, put the strong to fight, for the world is about to turn. My heart shall sing of the day you bring, let the fires of your justice burn. Wipe away all tears, for the dawn draws near, and the world is about to turn. From the halls of power to the of your justice burn. Wipe away all tears for the dawn draws near and the world is about to turn. Though the nations rage from age to age, we remember who holds us fast. God's mercy must deliver us from the conqueror's crushing grass. This saving word that our forebears heard is the promise we're told just bound. Till the spear and rod can be crushed by God who is turning the world around. My heart shall sing of the day you bring, let the fires of your justice burn. Wipe away all tears for the dawn draws near and the world is about to turn. Thank you, Adam. The stairs of the county down. Will you join me in the parting prayer? Bless to us, O God, this day. The doors be open, the thresholds be crossed, and all the roads that lie before us. Go with us always as we go, and at the close of our day, welcome us home. So for those of you who have lit a candle, it comes not time to extinguish the candle. To remember the light of Christ is not in candles. It is in us. And where two or three of us are gathered together, Christ is there. You join me in the benediction. May the blessing of the maker be yours, encircling us above us and within us. May the blessing of the sun be yours, the wine and the water, the bread and the stories to feed us and remind us. May the blessing of the spirit be yours, the wind and the fire, the still small voice of calm to comfort us and disturb us. And may the blessings of God, three in one and one in three, be yours this day and every day to protect us, defend us, encourage us and strengthen us. And may we bless each other, a blessing rooted in our common pilgrimage, the blessing of a friend. At this point, 
look around the table, mention the names of those who are there with you, extend a smile to each one of them. At this point, think of those to whom your heart goes. At this point, think of people who are in your past. At this point, think of people whom you love. At this point, think that they are all God's children. And he loves me. Think on that. Adam, you take us to the choral prayer. Walk with mercy and with God's humble care. When you walk from here, when you walk from here, walk with justice, walk with mercy and with God's humble care. So thank you for joining us in worship today. May God bless you during the coming week, and may God guide all of us toward next week's worship service. God bless. Bye-bye. If any of you would like to join us after the recording of the service, please stay with us, and we'll open the chat line so we have a visit with each other. Thanks be to God. Amen. Cheryl, will you end the recording? I did. Thank you. Good morning, all. If you would like to speak, um, please uh, click the participant buttons and open a window, and I will um, unmute you And when I see your hand. Okay. I, I still see the recording bless, uh, button, button flashing here. Where? I can do it again. <laughs>